The scripture today comes from the book of Jeremiah, and it starts with verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 through 13, and it reads as such. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine the care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked by utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracks and cisterns that can hold no water. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Master, open our hearts to hear your words this morning. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, this time last year, Hoppy was in a bad way, and this just must not be his time of year because the other day he had a very bad experience. He was on his moped. Y'all know he's got a moped. And uh, he was uh, riding along the road, and, and there was a Ferrari stopped at a stoplight. And Hoppy was just real, you know, he, he looked, liked it and he said, told the guy, that's a great car. How much did you pay for this car? He said, half a million dollars. I said, why would you pay $500,000 for a car? He said, man, this car will go 200 miles an hour. So Hoppy said, can I, can I look at it? And so he leaned over and leaned in the car and was looking at the car and um, uh, everything was just, you know, beautiful. And so the light changed and the guy was going to show Hoppy what the car could do, so he floors it and goes streaming down the street, screaming down the street. And he looks in his rearview mirror, and Hoppy is right behind him (laughs) on that moped. So he floors it even faster, and they're going about 100 miles an hour. And the guy comes to another stop light, and he stops, and um, he said, man, that... That, motor, that scooter can do anything. He said, what, what can I do for you to keep up with me so fast? And he said, well, you can let me take my uh, suspenders away from your uh, side view mirror. <laughs> Five, a true story, Hoppy said. You know, we, we have a lot of fun, but we, we really need to think about the, the fact that we live in a society where people buy half a million dollar cars. God tells Jeremiah, said, my people who I brought out of Egypt, the people that I saved from the oppression of the Egyptians, the people that I formed to be my people, to be the people of God, have gone away from God. They have chased after worthless things and have become worthless. They have chased after worthless things and have become themselves worthless. We live in a society of materialism and we chase things. We chase things. You know, it, it's, it's kind of like um, the fact that, that um, you, you want things. 
You know, I don't know about y'all, but there's always something I want. Y'all like that? Um, I've got a, an old bass boat, but, you know, if I had a new bass boat, it would be a whole lot better. I could get, you know, I, I could take off and, and go fishing during the week. And, um, you know, just a new boat instead of an old boat with, a, with one of those new side finder, fish finders on it, one of those, you know, Scott knows what I'm talking about. Find those, you know, and if I just had that, I could, I could really uh, do some things. If I just had more money, I could really live it up. The people of God were chasing worthless things, and God said, they have become worthless to me. They don't remember the, tr- the tragedy, the oppression of Israel. During the time of the Egyptian, of the Egyptians when they were building and having to make mortar and bricks, they'd forgotten what it was like in that sin. God is using that as a metaphor for sin. They, they were burdened. They were enslaved by sin. But God came and He showed them by ten miraculous things that happened to Egypt. Ten plagues came to Egypt and God showed not only His own people the power that He had, the majesty that He was, the glory that He is. They showed Him He showed not only His own people, but the Egyptians. Who really was God? God was showing them there is only one true God. And His people were called. He he brought them out of this captivity, out of this oppression. He, He brought them out of this captivity where their sins crushed them. He brought them out of captivity to live in a land flowing with milk and honey, a a place that was almost like Eden. But they turned from Him. They turned from Him. They began to worship evil things, gods that could be destroyed, stoned, gods that could be broken, stone, uh, uh, wooden gods that could be burned. They began to worship the things that were not of God. And we do that. We do that. Just one more dollar. If I just had one more dollar, just one more. And we keep saying that until money becomes our God. God makes a point through Jeremiah that they were struggling in sin. I don't know what's going on in your life today. I, I, I don't know. But maybe you are oppressed by the sin in your life. What you have to remember is that we have a God who used Moses and the ten plagues on Egypt to show His people His glory and His power, to show His people that He could do anything, that God could do anything, could cleanse them from their sins. You see, in the time, at the perfect time, God sent Moses to the people of Israel. In perfect time, God sent Christ to save us from our sins. God said, you must be holy, for I am holy. But the people were not holy. The people of God were not holy. They chased after other things, and they forgot the love 
And sometimes we forget the love that God showed us in Jesus Christ. It's amazing to look and study history. Bob said he liked history. If you you study history, you begin to understand that, that all of a sudden the Persian Empire takes over the Babylonian Empire and they're they send the refugees from Israel home to build the temple, to build the wall around Jerusalem. God sent, uh, allowed them to come home. And not only that, but after the Persians, the Greeks came. And Alexander spread the, the Hellenistic society throughout all the world. There was a common language of commerce for the world. The sea lanes were kept open by the Romans, kept the pirates down. The roads that Rome built were patrolled by the Roman soldiers to keep the bandits away. So we have a common language. We have uh, safe roads to travel. We have safe sea lanes to travel in. And in the midst of all of this, God takes an insignificant woman, a young woman, He takes her and He impregnates her. She gives birth to the Son who is both fully human and fully divine. A God. God, His Son in human form. Hebrews says we don't have a God who doesn't understand our problems. We have a God who knows what it's like to hurt. To know what it's like to feel pain. What it's like to lose a loved one. God knows, but through Jesus Christ, He knows what it is to struggle, to be hungry, to be thirsty. He knows what life can be. He knows how tough it can be on us. He knows how little strength we have, the weaknesses that we have in our lives. I I don't know what you're going through, but I do know this. We quit chasing worthless things and turn our hearts to God. God is with us in a mighty way. God offers us peace. He offers us care. He offers us tenderness and love. God strengthens us and fills us by His power. But most of all, remember the jars. Remember the jars that when we commit sin, our soul becomes dark. And the only thing that can drive that darkness away is Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. The children of God we're placed in a land flowing with milk and honey. We are placed in a relationship with God that is the same way. It is so rich and so overwhelming that it's just hard for us to take it all in, to be thankful for what God has given us. Whatever you're going through, tough times, tough times. God is with us. God will be with us and strengthen us. God will love us through whatever is happening in our lives. God cares for us, loves us, and wants us to be His people, His children. Excuse me. God loves us so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross for you and me. Whatever your trials are today, whatever your temptations are today, I hope that you will accept God into your life and say to Him, Here I am, Lord. Here I am in need of your care. Let me open my heart to you. Let us pray. Lord, we open our hearts to you that we may worship you, 
that we may love you, that we may be strengthened by you. We pray, Lord, these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a great ministry here at our church.